Welcome back and welcome to part two of the British and South Africa 1857 to 1895 in which we'll look at whether the policies were consistent and also whether they were for the benefit of the populations who lived there. Now in this slide you have the three characters most associated with plans for a federation of southern African states. Top left you've got Lord Carnarvon, the colonial secretary. He had been involved in a plan to federate the Canadian states which seemed to have worked so he thought the same thing could be achieved in southern Africa even though southern Africa was much more diverse in terms of um, the inhabitants there. But he thought a federation was necessary uh, to prevent encroachment by the Boers to make the Boers part of the Federation and also to provide security against uh, potential um, rebellions by African tribes. He sent out Sir Bartle Frere, doubled Bartle Frere's salary uh, as British High Commissioner and Governor of Cape Colony to institute um, or to bring about this uh, Federation um, and Bartle Frere was helped by Theophilus Shepston who was a local official who, son of a missionary, spoke number of African languages um, as a negotiator um, and as we will see the, the plans do come unstuck in fact straight away members of the Cape Parliament object to it uh, some of them pointing out that if there's a federation with Boer republics uh, the coloured inhabitants of the Cape might well lose their voting rights and in fact in the longer term they were to prove correct because when South Africa became a, a country um, after the Boer War uh, those that lost out were the, the coloured um, people in the Cape who had had the vote and, and lost that right as, in, as apartheid was instituted. Pictured in this slide is uh, Sekun Hune, the chief of the Pedi. The Pedi were a tribe um, who had had their land uh, annexed, or taken by the Transvaal Boers and after refusing to pay taxes to them they uh, were attacked by a Boer commando but they managed to repel the Boer commando. Um, and peace terms were agreed, but uh, the resistance to the petty was one of the reasons given by Shepston for why the Boers should become part of a federation protected by the British. Um, but the bigger threat uh, were the Zulus who were on the border of the Transvaal. The Zulus were, were a kingdom. Um, and the king was Chetsuwe, pictured there on the left in, in Western dress. A very impressive individual, very astute, and as we'll see, a great military commander. Um, now, Shepston had um, been seen as a friend of the Zulus. Um, and in fact, uh, he, he spoke Zulu as a language, but as we'll see, he was to more or less betray them. Um, he... Uh, he approached the Boers, Shepston, and told them that uh, they'd protect, the British would protect them from the Zulus and in fact defeat the Zulus. And Chetsuwe was given an ultimatum to disarm his army um, and to accept some form of British rule, which he couldn't accept. He didn't want war, but he, he couldn't just abandon uh, his, his kingdom. And an attempt to justify a uh, war against the Zulus, um, Shepston and Frere organised a boundary commission to look at whether the Zulus had encroached into uh, the Transvaal, but the boundary commission found they hadn't. In fact, if anything, it had been the Boers who had encroached on Zulu territories. But nevertheless, um, an ultimatum was presented to Chetsuwe that uh, he had to disarm his army, and he wasn't going to do this. Um, the Battle of Inzandwala, you're probably familiar with, uh, when the British were defeated um, by a well-organised uh, Zulu army. But ultimately, of course, the, the Zulus were beaten, although the campaign to defeat them cost £4.9 million. Pounds. But having, having the Zulu threat removed, uh, the Boers and the Transvaal saw no reason why they should continue um, the situation where they'd been annexed by the British Empire. So as we'll see in the next slide, the Boers in the Transvaal now rebel against the British. You've heard of the Battle of Majuba Hill and Lang's Neck, uh, two occasions when Boer commandos, irregular soldiers, farmers who were crack shots and good horsemen 
managed to defeat the British. On uh, the Battle of Machuba Hill, as you know, they used uh, fire and manoeuvre, uh, where one uh, soldier would cover another as he moved forward, and they even beat the British, despite the fact that the British occupied the top of the hill. Um, but this defeat was fairly clear-cut, and um, was to lead to peace negotiations. There were two peace treaties. First of all, the Pretoria Convention in 1881, in which South African Republic became the Transvaal Territory, self-governing, but British suzerainty recognised. That word means that effectively the, the Transvaal Boers could rule themselves, but in matters of foreign policy, the British had the final say. Um, then there was the London Convention. Well, I haven't put the date in there, but it's uh, 1884, in which the Transvaal reverted to being the South African Republic and suzerainty was, was dropped.